Today I will show you exactly how I use TradingView from a new sign up to power user in 10 minutes. TradingView is maybe the most important tool in my professional life. And if you're not using it to its full potential, you're really missing out. No matter if you've never used the tool before or you use it every day, I hope I can teach you something new today. Everything I will show you today can be done completely free. No paid TradingView plan is required. If you don't have an account, use the link in the description to sign up because then if in the future you upgrade to a paid plan, you get $30 discount. And if you don't use the link at sign up, you can't add it later. So we click the link, either choose free trial or scroll down a little bit here and select try basic free. I'm not a robot, or am I? Oh, this is difficult. Did I do something wrong? Select all square with bicycles. It's difficult already. Then you click here where it says chart. How do you pronounce chart? Chart. 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 Is it correct? <laughs> when you come here, this URL here is important. Bookmark that one. Because this is your entry point into TradingView. That is what TradingView calls a chart. Which is misleading because this is where you keep all your charts. Now to the most important and serious section of today's tutorial. You'll never be a legendary trader or investor if you don't have a cool color theme. Now, I'm not much of an artist. Nope. Can you please help me with something? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So, can you please design some cool uh, color theme here? Okay. I got coffee. I got coffee. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it cool enough? Uh -huh. So you saw how it's done, you just right click, go to settings, appearance, you set the background and that symbol, you set the color of the bars. I personally prefer to get rid of these grid lines also that are here. I feel you don't need them. Go into settings, maybe there's some other way, but I just go into settings and put them to 0% opacity. By selecting the darker color to be the down candle and the lighter to be the up candle might make it easier for others to read your chart, but there are no rules really. In settings you can also save it as a template in case you accidentally change something later. So what is a candle really? The candle board is from the opening to the close on the candle time frame. So on a daily candle on say Bitcoin, that is from midnight to midnight. If it closes higher than it opened, it's a yellow candle. If it closes lower than it opened, it's a red candle under this color theme. Then the wicks is what happened within the day. To avoid confusion, I set the time here to UTC, which stands for Coordinated Universal Time. Coordinated Universal Time, UTC. Well, it's what was called Greenwich Mean Time when I went to school. And when you download the app on your phone, which you should, it will look the same. I prefer candles over the other chart patterns, like these. Why is that and why does it matter? Well, if price moves up and then quickly moves back down again in the other direction, that isn't as significant as if price goes somewhere and then stays there. That's why I prefer the candles. They look more solid when they show something that is more solid. But sometimes, just to get a different perspective, I do use these two. The line and the bars. Another way to instantly get a different perspective is to press Option I on a Mac or Alt I on a PC. This is Ethereum to USD. Let's press Option I, zoom out a little. Ah, look, is this a double bottom in the making? I should buy this if it confirms. Oh, wait. You get the idea. Option I to switch back. Now let's press here where it says Watch List. To add new assets, you click this Add symbol and type something like BTC USD. Then you click the plus sign on the assets you want to add. The crosshair jumps to that asset in this list. When selecting which exchange to add, I usually add at least two categories. Number one, the one with the longest history. And number two, the one with the highest volume at present time or the one that drives the market. And these are usually not the same. For example, on Bitcoin, Bitstamp has history going all the way back to 2012 here. While a lot of the whale moves are happening now at Coinbase Pro or sometimes at Binance. BLX is a fun one to add. 
because it has price history going back all the way to July 2010. While it shows only the closing price down to each day, not the current price right now. Then for altcoins, I almost always add both the alt to BTC chart and the alt to USD or USD equivalent stablecoin chart. The ticker is usually the coin symbol plus BTC or something with USD. So let's add this one for example and this one. Maybe we want to add these ones. BTC.D is Bitcoin dominance, it's very useful, use that a lot, got that here. Then you can even add in many obscure alts that are only trading on for example Uniswap. Just type Uniswap colon. The first one here is Hex, this is not an endorsement, I'm just showing TradingView. TradingView doesn't show you where to buy something by the way, a better way to do that is to go to CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and click here on the Markets tab. Then you get the exchanges sorted by volume. But watch out here, if you watched Elon get a new dog, you go here, you type Floki, then you have one pair called Floki to wrapped ETH and another coin that's called Floki Elon and yet one more coin called Floki Pro. And these are not the same coins, I mean no harm looking at the chart, but don't be tricked here and go buy something else than you intended later. We can add some tech stocks, maybe something like that. And then maybe some indices, SPX, already there, Nasdaq, Dow Jones, China E50, Shanghai, Nifty 50, India, and Tokyo. You can drag to rearrange this as you see fit. And Standard & Poor seems up since the 1950s, so that's good news. Then you can click here to tag your favorites, maybe Twitter, Celsius, Bitcoin. Then if you go here you can click the red list and you got those three sorted nicely for you. Click here to go back. On the paid plan you can also have more lists here. This little icon here is important, it's log, I always use log. Log means that the constant relative move becomes a straight line. Like if price increases 10% per month, that becomes a straight line on a log chart. And tech assets tend to behave that way. If we look at the Amazon chart here from year 2000, you can see that it's pretty much just a straight line. And this is not the exception, this is typically how it works out. Why that is, is outside the scope of this particular video. The other one here is called auto, that means that if you zoom in it changes the price scale here. Sometimes you want that and sometimes you want more manual control. On the Mac I just use two fingers to swipe up or down to zoom time frame in or out. Holding command when zooming in and out holds the position in the chart. Two fingers move left or right, move the timeline and if you disable auto with drag you can drag the timeline around like this. And to zoom the price scale in and out you just drag or scroll while holding the cursor here. And the drawing tools are here and if drawing a line, picking the line tool here and you hold shift it becomes a straight line, incredibly useful. Then there is a magnet tool here, but you don't need to use it. Instead hold command and can you see that it snaps here to this point or to this point or to this. So if I want to draw from here, I just hold command, I start the line, then I hold shift to get the straight line and I can draw a perfectly straight line like that without clicking any tools here on the left. Command Z or Control Z on the PC undo, extremely useful. And the only tools I use are basic line, horizontal line or horizontal ray. If you draw some detail and you don't want to see it on bigger time frame, you can right click, go to settings and on the visibility you can select that you don't want to see it on the weekly or monthly time frame for example. Then if you switch back here to weekly, that triangle is gone. If we go back to daily, it's there again. I use the curve tool to draw parabolas. A curve isn't the same thing as a parabola but it's the closest thing we got. Use the text tool to add some text. Please don't break parabola. You can also use the text function to add icons or whatever, but there's also a separate icon function down here. Then I often use this one, date and price range, which is like a measuring tool that stays and sticks on the chart. You get the absolute number, the relative number and how many days it's spanned over. Of course can use the ruler instead, but I prefer to leave them on the chart. If I measured it once, chances are I want to see it again. But what if you want to draw two different interpretations on the same ticker? That's when you need to sign up for the pro plan, right? Not really, you could just add two similar charts from two exchanges. Let me show you. Now I've drawn this here, right? Then I just click another BTC USD ticker down here and I could draw this one a little differently if I want. First interpretation, second interpretation, both BTC USD. 
Then this little tool here, stay in drawing mode is useful if you want to draw many lines of the same type. So say I want to draw one line here, then I want to do another line here and another line here. Then by staying in drawing mode I don't need to go back here and click line each time. To add indicators you press here and just browse around here or type something, maybe this one. And I got nice moving averages on my chart. If you have access to the Larsen line indicator, the easiest is to first favorite on the home page for the indicator which I sent you. And then click the little arrow here, which is favorite indicators, and then select it here. Then it will appear at all your charts. The indicator access as such comes with my process and course on ctolarsen.com, and you can use it with a free trading view plan. There I also cover how to use this VPVR, that's these bars here on the right. That's maybe the only really useful thing that you can't do with a free trading view plan and I promise this video would only be about free stuff. I don't use the trading platform integration. I prefer to have trading view as a harmless place which has no security concerns. I personally don't want it to have access to anything but that might be different for you. There are various chat functions here on the right. I don't really use it. But something that is really fun to use is this function. If you go to Twitter and you find some tweet with a YouTube face and everything and you copy the link, it says here Ethereum to 2000. What does that mean? It's more than that already. And you go to your chart and press paste. And look here what happens. It detects the date of the tweet and attaches it to that point in the chart. So it turns out that this guy here posted this with Ethereum going to 2000 when the price was 400 something back in November 2020. When everyone told him it was ridiculous and that he was an idiot. What is great with TradingView is that it's not crippled in the free plan. You can track an unlimited number of assets, I think, with real power use. You can even use custom indicators like Larsen Line without having a paid plan. There are basically maybe two limitations that are worth noting on the free plan. The first one is this volume profile indicators that I already mentioned. But that's pretty advanced already, you can live without it. The other one is really to have separate watch list. You can't add a second group here and I use that all the time to organize my assets. Assets. Otherwise there's just too many in one row. I really like to be able to select like crypto, indices, tech stocks, commodities, forex and so on. I don't like to have them all in one list. Then you have ads here on the basic plan but I mean so do almost all other social platforms but it can be a little bit stressful if you're doing something and some ad pops up when money is on the line. A lot of people go in here and see this charts per tab and think that this is a problem but I already explained that's not really charts it's just more like a library because as I just showed you it's only if you really absolutely have to have different drawings on exactly the same chart from the same exchange that you need this. Otherwise it's very generous you can have three indicators per chart already in the basic platform. Otherwise it's more convenience functions like you can have more colors on the tags like here or use more than one device at the same time. But you can use the mobile app also on the free plan like I just showed. Like you could only go back to the 50s on SP500 instead of to the 1800 here. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content and I'll see you in this video. Thank you for watching. See you all out. Hey